you always hear that the biggest enemy of any engine is the dry start. Every time you start the engine, it doesn't have any oil in it and that creates problems. How long does it take to create a dry start situation, Kevin? Well, uh, 35 minutes and uh, as little as 30 seconds. And, and so a lot of folks talk about maybe a rattle when they start up, and is, is that what creates that? Generally? Yeah, you know, so many systems rely on simply oil pressure, let alone lubrication to work properly. You got cam phaser uh, gears and you got like cam chain tensioner. Those items require the hydraulic pressure to work properly. And that lack of pressure till it gets satisfied causes problems with those systems. But those few seconds can create so much damage in the engine over the course of time. Absolutely. So you have a solution. We do, of course. Extra performance. Now tell me what you brought here. Well, typical with cartridge filter systems, some have anti-drain back valves in them, but they don't have outflow prevention. So the oil filter can still be emptied. We have a solution for that. Some are mounted underneath and don't require any kind of prevention to keep it from outflowing because they're mounted underneath. But other ones are mounted up on top. So we have various solutions for the applications. That one is actually for the Ford 2.7 3 liter EcoBoost engines. Okay. They're mounted on top. They drain out in about 18 minutes. Okay. In your actual manual that you get with the vehicle, it tells you to wait 15 minutes before checking the oil level. And some people theorize that it's draining out of the heads. It takes a little while to get down there. You hope not because you want that oil recirculating yeah. fast. So what ours does is it keeps it from draining out of the oil cooler and the filter. That otherwise happens in 18 minutes. Moving on from the Ford then, we have the Pentastar. This is Chrysler's Right, Chrysler's and of course, very popular with the Jeeps. For sure, mm -hmm. also mounted on top. Uh, mm -hmm. What's special about this? We have about a 35 minute total drain out on that. Takes the cooler with it as well. We incorporate a full flow outflow check valve on the unit and along with a Schrader valve that you just apply three seconds of compressed air and it blows down the system so that when you remove the spin on filter that you've converted it to, no mess at all. And you have a special cleat here. Absolutely. Because of the tight confinements with the engine configuration, when you install it, we had to figure out a way to keep it rotationally clocked to the right position to access the Schrader valve, what have you. So what we did was we incorporated a cleat here that actually distorts the threads that is tightened by a screw on the very end. When you install it and clock it to the right position, tighten it. It won't loosen or in any way when you uh, install the uh, spin-on filter you're converting to or taking it off. And that's for the newer Pentastar engines. The older ones are a little bit different. And you older ones are a little bit different. So we have this variant is for uh, 2014 and newer, but we'll be introducing um, oil filter adapters for the uh, 2011 through 2013 um, versions of that engine. Gotcha. I've got a friend with a Subaru. He says that thing rattles all the time when yeah, it starts. Yeah, it does. Up. And this is the Subaru unit? Yeah, so the same application here, basically, but uh, we incorporate the same check valve on top and the Schrader valve for evacuation. What happens with the Subaru is it drains out in about 30 seconds. It fills up the filter, right, and the headspace of air remains in the filter so that when you shut off the engine, that headspace goes to ambient pressure because it was compressed before, pushes it out, and then it totally empties. And because it shares the same vein, basically, that leads up from the pump, and it's only separated by a plate without a gasket, both sides actually evacuate, regardless if the filter even had an anti-drain back valve. So our takes care of that by keeping both of those uh, galleys flooded and you never have a dry start. What about the folks that want a different location and they want to relocate the oil filter? Well, what we have here is a relocation mount. This one is for Toyota, and we can port off the bottom or off the side, depending on the configuration. Some, are, some engines ha require mounting like this, other ones are like this. So it allows us to port out and go to a remote mount like we have here. And uh, this is our inverted remote mount, but you'd have it for different reasons. You'd want to relocate it or you want to add extra oil cooling. And this allows for that diversity to be able to adapt your um, cooling or relocation. For 15 years or so, Toyota's been getting away from the spin-on filter to go to the cartridge filter and that creates a lot of problems. Yes, so much so that they're actually transitioning now back to the spin-on filters, right? So they were having drain back issues and some people just simply didn't like dealing with the cartridge filter system. So it's no surprise that they're going back to the reliable spin-on filter that incorporates an anti-drain back valve. And so you don't have a flow back on the filter anymore. The Toyota behind us, we put an adapter for Baxter Performance on that. The installation was super simple. Of course, took off the skid plate to get access to it. Yeah, it was plug and play. So all we do is we remove the cap and filter, 
apply lubrication to our O-rings that come pre-installed. You simply install it right where the cap was, and now you can apply your spin-on filter right on way. Well, this is American Ingenuity, and it's made right here in America. It's solving a huge problem. You can find it at BaxterPerformanceUSA.com. We'll return right after this with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coating, so keep it right here.